What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the NCAA Football 13 webcast. This is on Sights and Sounds, playbook number one. I've got to remind you to set your calendars for April 17th, which is when our next webcast will be, and we're talking about gameplay, guys. Indeed. Pretty excited about gameplay that. Gameplay is good. we got to get to audio. So here is designer Christian McLeod joining Ben and I. Uh, now, Christian, tell us about your background. We talked to Jeff a little bit. Tell us where you came from. You were uh, like an engineer or something. Correct, correct. <laughs> I, uh, I went to college. I was going the uh, the med school route, majored in biology and human medicine. I okay. uh, got a cool job out of, out of college purifying proteins, uh, chemical engineer. <laughs> and, that sounds uh, really cool. So so kind of kind of had a passion for college football, always had a passion for the NCAA series. I've been playing since the Bill Walsh days 20 years ago. So. I uh, started writing for Operation Sports, was a senior staff writer over there for three years, and ended up here. So I've been, been on the team since October, um, designing various uh, things throughout the game, but primarily audio and commentary. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, why don't you go into your presentation here? All right, super. Um, wanted to talk to you guys a little bit, uh, starting with audio improvements. We're going to talk about audio and also commentary, so we'll, we'll get started here with audio. Crowds... As you know, they're the essence of college football. Um, there's, there's nothing like being in a crowd of 50 to 100,000 people all in unison chanting for their team and, and you know, electrifying that college football atmosphere. I'm really happy to report that um, this year we've got a brand new audio team here at EA um, led by our new audio director, Aaron Jansen. Uh, Aaron joins us from EAC up in Vancouver. And um, AJ, as we call him, another AJ, um, he works on both FIFA and the Fight Night series, uh, with his specialization being crowds. Um, with that being said, we are implementing an all-new crowd mix into NCAA 13. And um, that's a, a feature that may include you. Oh, oh look at that with, transition. Nice. With exclamation points. <laughs> Three of them, no less. Three. No question marks. <laughs> exclamation points. Um, anyhow, like I was saying, you know, we want you to be in the game. Uh, this year, we, we really made a concerted push to attend games and record uh, stadium-specific audio, crowd swells, and team chants during the 2011 season. Um, we've done this in the past, but really with our old crowd mix, we were, we were adding assets to a, a crowd mix that was kind of weak, to be perfectly honest. So the, the main push this year was to get a, a brand new crowd mix, which AJ has worked on for us. Um, and we also some sent community members to games to assist with the recording process. And so anyone, think, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, anyone familiar with the FIFA series or Fight Night knows that their audio has been pretty top notch. Correct, correct. And it's it's extremely important for us to to harness their tech and their workflows so that we can deliver, you know, just as as big of an experience as they had in their you know Bayern Munich matches and oh, German sure. crowds chanting back and forth. We want that for college football. Um, we're also working closely with ESPN to utilize on-field feeds um, to help capture a more realistic crowd uh, sound as well. So this year, AJ managed to attend the big game between Ohio State and Michigan. And we used a 24-track recorder that was provided by ESPN to capture um, you know, just the swells, the excitement, the electricity of that atmosphere. And we were able to, to pull those assets and put them into our new crowd mix. So as I mentioned, um, you know, we want to put you in the game. We want your crowd chance in the game. We want to, we want to pick you up there. So this year we were able to get 24 new uh, school-specific chants into the game. Um, we attended various games throughout the season, which I'll get to in a little bit here. But um, you know, if you're a FSU fan, Oklahoma, Penn State, Georgia Tech, Boise State, USF, Texas, Wisconsin, Michigan, sadly, uh, <laughs> being, being a Michigan State guy, you know, we, we've got your game, or we've got specific chance to your school that we're able to bring over into the game this year. Um, and here's our, our list of the games that we attended. So I'll, I'll leave this up here for a couple seconds. If you guys want to take a look. Um, if you were at one of these games, congratulations, you indirectly contributed to NCAA 13. So as you can see, too, we attended large, um, large stadiums, medium stadiums, and small stadiums just to get that or capture that authentic sound experience that you'll get in, in large stadiums, small stadiums, and also those medium stadiums. As well as a high school game, yeah. Yeah, a high school game too. So, so I don't want to get ahead of you here yep. if you're about to talk about it, but... Uh, we love hearing the story about what you guys used to do to get <laughs> audio. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, so, yeah, that's actually a, a funny part because I was here back in those days. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a tester back in 2003, you know, we were on a rooftop garage uh, over here at Tiburon recording these chants. <laughs> like 30, 40, 50 of us testers, however many there were, <laughs> up on a hot summer day just trying to do Ooh Pig Suey and all these other chants, OHIO and all that <laughs> stuff. 
And, I mean, it, it's, to the detriment of the game, it sounded like that. It sounded like 30 guys yeah. on a roof. And it sounded like guys who were passionate for each individual school. And, like, for the War Chant, for example, I can hear my own voice in the sample that we use. Because I know how I do the chant. I can hear myself. And there's so few voices in there. And it was kind of sampled up to make it sound like more, but it doesn't sound anything like what it really sounds like. And that was a problem with all of our chants in the game. And so we're going through systematically and, and re-recording all of these with the actual crowd. And so that Oklahoma-Florida State game, I mean, that's 83,000 going crazy. And it sounds well, so different. And we're going to play some examples yeah. here of some things. Uh, but, yeah, it just sounds so much different and so much better. And just the general crowd itself, uh, you know, being able to go to that Ohio State-Michigan game and utilize the 24-track mm -hmm. recorder with ESPN, uh, you know, that helps everything out. Uh, you know, just the generic crowd and the, the sweeteners and the, the ambient sound that you hear now, uh, you know, in these, these chants. It's not just people doing the chant, but people yelling their own things around and that sort of thing. So it's a really right. nice addition that way. Um, you know, I know a lot of people probably heard us talk about the chants last year and the crowd itself and the mix. And, uh, you know, we talked about that, the chance that we had to, uh, to make 100,000 sound like 100,000 and 20,000 sound like 20,000. I think ultimately at the end, the mix wasn't what we wanted and wasn't what we thought it was going to be. Um, and so that's one thing that Christian's talking about going through is the whole change is that it is going to sound different. And it is going to be tuned for TV speakers. You know, I think that was one of the problems last year was that portion wasn't there. Correct. If you had a high-end stereo system, you got the full breadth of, of what we were doing but that was missed on a lot of our audience. And so we were going back to, to fix that this year and to change that and make that so that if you are playing on TV speakers, you're going to get a full, rich experience. If you're playing on a higher end system, you're going to get even more, but we're not going to lose yeah. you know, a majority of our audience just for this, that, that top end. Correct. You know? Correct. Nailed it. So we're going to move over here to some examples. As Ben was talking about, we're going to play a game here to see if you guys can pick up <laughs> on, uh, on Ben's... Ben's chant as part of the NCAA yes. 12. So let's start up um, at Texas. We'll start with Texas Fight. And this is the NCAA version of Texas Fight. Yeah, sounds good. Well, sounds old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sounds very old. Right. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at, uh, or take a listen to NCAA 13's Texas Fight. a lot more you know, depth and, and richness to that sound compared to what we were hearing last year. Um, let's go to Oklahoma. Let's go to Boomer Sooner. This is a, a personal favorite of mine. This sounds like a bunch of dying turkeys. <laughs> <from NCAA laughs> 12. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now we'll take a look at I the... I hear the dying turkeys. Yes. The, the new and improved uh, Boomer Sooner for all you Oklahoma fans out there. We'll, we'll move, legit. move out to Tallahassee, oh. near and dear to Ben. I was the guy who recorded the Oklahoma game, too. So, and, you know, I'm still, even though it's not my voice anymore, <laughs> I'm still a part of it. You know, I'm still up there. <laughs> so let's, let's see. Here's Ben on the top of a parking lot yes. a few years back. Many years ago. I mean, it, it just doesn't sound as full, obviously. Correct. And here, here's the new and improved Seminole War Chant. Good job, Ben. There we go. Thank Great you. Great work. It was tough. Much Great better. work. To stand there with a recorder on the, on the sideline <laughs> for that game was a tough gig. Uh, I look forward to doing it again. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll take a look or this a listen is, this is the best. finally to uh, <laughs> Pig Suey for all you Arkansas fans from 2000 or from last year's game, 2012. <laughs> Yeah. 
hurt to hear that. I know, it's, it's, it's a tough one. <laughs> and here's the new and improved Pig Suey. Drastic difference. So, so as we were saying, just, you know, all 80,000, 50,000, 70,000 fans in unison with their chance, it, it adds so much more to the, that uh, crowd dynamic. I, I think that's the way, to, to sum up what you just said there, it's a, it is a drastic difference. Yeah. Um, and I, I think people are definitely going to be able to pick up on that. And added to the, the new crowd and uh, the way the mix is set up, these are just the chances that are going to come in behind it that are going to make it even more robust. And so it's kind of one of those things where you know, we, we sent some community guys out this year to some spots and got uh, you know, a bunch of games and we did our own as well. And it's going to keep going and going. And we're going to get to every school and get every single chant unique in the game and legit. And I'll be honest, like, I didn't, I never really thought of it like, okay, our games sound bad. Like, NCAA football just doesn't sound like a stadium until now that I've heard what it can sound right. like. And now it's like, it, yeah, it's drastic. Oh, yeah. So. And yeah, that's the key thing. Like Ben said, when you hear these with the all new crowd mix, the stadium feels alive for NCAA 13. It's really, really exciting. And, you know, as a result, as I mentioned, you know, a, a richer, louder, more robust and realistic crowd in NCAA 13. That's what we're aiming for. Um, you know, we, we want to continue to improve our crowd as the years go on. Um, we won't always want to improve on year to year, but this year we're very happy with what we have. So um, it's, it's an exciting time for NCAA crowds. There we go. Yeah. Good, good lead off. I like yeah. that. Good start. <laughs> it is. All right, now let's talk about commentary improvements. Throw up the sleeves and, and get down to the nitty gritty. Sleeves are rolled up. Everybody, sleeves <laughs> rolled. <laughs> All right, came in, as I mentioned, um, in October. And one of my main areas I've been focused on is commentary. And came in with a, a new mission statement for NCAA 13 and, and beyond. Um, you know, the three main points are we want to increase our contextual awareness want to enhance our broadcast flow. We want to refresh and replace old assets when it comes to the commentary. So what does all that mean? Increasing contextual awareness. Um, looking at our old engine, we realized that we had some severe limitations that were really handcuffing us to talk about what we wanted to talk to in our game. Um, you know, our old engine had been, had been used for years, and we had taken a look at some tech that was being used by our colleagues again up at EAC specifically on the FIFA series and the NHL series, some really critically acclaimed commentary up there. Um, we were able to move to an engine that was pioneered by them. And the key advantage of this new engine is we're now able to request data on past events. It's, an, it's a non-linear system. And I think the best metaphor that I like to, to liken the systems to is our old system was very much like a traditional chapter book where you had a, a you know, defined beginning, middle, and an end. Um, you know, we, we were able to recognize some past events, but we weren't able to go very far in the past. So, for example, you know, you'd be in the fourth quarter. We might know what happened in drives you know, directly before the fourth quarter, but we wouldn't be able to go back to the first quarter, the second quarter, and the third quarter, take a look at how those stats added up, and then make a, a determination as to, you know, based on how a team is playing in the fourth, how that, I guess, tells the story of how this game has progressed. Um, our new system is more like a choose-your-own-adventure novel where we're able to request this data on any past event and get it sent to us. So there's, there's multiple beginnings, there's multiple middles, there's multiple ends. It just allows us to talk to so much more. And um, the key thing really, too, is we're going to be able to place a, a greater importance on specific events. So would you say that uh, a good way to explain it would be that in the past it almost seemed like the broadcasters had only been there for, like when they're talking about the game, they'd mm -hmm. only been there for the last quarter or something. Correct, correct, they're only yeah. talking about what's going on. memory like goldfish. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's a gr great way of looking at it. They would recognize, you know, a, a set time frame that they could remember back mm -hmm. to, whereas now we're able to open up all these possibilities by looking at statistics and, and know what happened in the first quarter on the very last play of the fourth quarter. And um, I think it's very important you know, for everybody to know that you know, this is year one of a multi-year contextual um, implementation. So uh, we want to do some very big things with this engine moving forward. This year was very big on, on putting this engine in, um, establishing it, testing it out, making sure that it, it flowed well with our game. And I think it put down a very nice commentary foundation to build on for years to come. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the th key things for us was uh, to make sure with this new system, you know, we, at the very worst, got back to where we were last year. We weren't going to take a step back with a new system. But then from there, once we got back to, mm -hmm. to where we were, 
what what key things can we work on this year? What steps forward can we make Correct. to try and improve things as we move forward? Correct. It just opens up so many possibilities for the future um, compared to where we're at before. You know, we're no longer shackled by that that old uh, commentary system. Okay, so I think uh, one of our questions here from OS might fit in here. Um, they asked, will NCAA Football 13 feature commentary that's not too repetitive? Will we finally hear some ebb and flow between the guys in the booth, sort of like how FIFA handles it? Is it all new commentary? If so, how many lines were recorded? All right. Let me answer, Mark, that. Let me answer that question with part two of our mission statement, enhance broadcast flow. In the past, um, we had brought our talent in. We had brought Kirk and Brad in, and we had written lines for them. They would then read the lines that we had written for them, and I, I think everyone would agree that it, it came across as being very scripted. Um, we consulted, again, with our, our colleagues up at EAC and what they had worked on with FIFA and NHL, and it turned out that we integrated a, an all-new ad-lib recording session or technique this year. And, and what that involved was we would set up some key context for the talent to talk to and then sort of let them go on their own give them maybe a couple key words but but let them take you know say it's it's a fourth and short and the team was just stuffed uh, turning the ball over late in the fourth quarter and you know go brad go kirk explain right. it in your words because as broadcasters mm -hmm. and i have a little experience in that it it's hard to just capture the feeling Correct. of what you're saying like with a play when Correct. you're just reading a script. Correct. You're the professional, so you guys kind of thought... Yeah, let, let, let them be the right. context experts, and you can't script reactions. Well, yeah, I mean, that's another thing, too. Yeah, talking about that scripting process, I mean, we'd watch hours and hours of Kirk, for example, mm -hmm. and just write down key words that he said during actual games or phrases that we liked in situations, and then we try to work that in. And, you know, if we needed, uh, say, ten lines for a certain section, like a, a reaction to a specific play... You'd start writing line one and line two, and then line three would be a little tougher, and line four, right. and then by, by line eight and line nine, line ten, you're just like getting blood from a stone here. This is impossible. Uh. <laughs> um, and so it's really about putting them in a situation because Kirk can come up with 20 lines right. on, in his head for, for each situation because yep. that's what he does. So you, know, you give him headphones to have the crowd you know, pumped in a little bit and some fight songs and things like that to, to keep his energy up and make it feel like he was at a real game. Uh, put him in that situation. You know, uh, yep. Christian would do a great job of kind of talking him through everything and kind of setting things up for him of, of what we needed and then letting him go. And no matter what, I mean, you can listen to a thousand hours of Kirk and write it. Kirk's brain still works a different way than what you yep. write things out. And so we're yep. never going to be that guy. Uh, let him be him. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let him be the expert that he is. And so we got some great results doing that. Yeah. I mean, like Ben was saying, you could write the most perfect line ever, but there might be a comma or a period somewhere that Kirk wouldn't pause naturally right. on, and it just throws his whole mojo off. So, um, you know, as Ben mentioned, it was it was great to get these guys in the studio, just feed them lines back and forth, and just kind of let them riff and do a theater of the mind. And I think both of them really enjoyed it. They yeah, had, yeah, had a great time. You saw an energy from the two of them that we haven't yeah. seen in a, in a long time yeah. uh, of being just fully back into excitement of what they're doing with, yep. with this. Because if you're just reading a list, it can get pretty mundane and pretty boring pretty quick. Sure. Yep. Um, you know, Brad is such a machine. You now, Brad can read through a thousand lines without making a mistake, pitch perfect every time. Mm -hmm. uh, but to get him a chance to, to really kind of ad-lib a little bit and, and kind of add his own flair to things, you know, it was great to see. And he, he was really appreciative to have that chance. And, I mean, yep. Kirk, that's the only way to record Kirk from here on out. Oh, we, know, we know that for sure. <laughs> and, and that's hitting on point two here is, you know, using commentary as a teaching tool. And, you know, Kirk Herbstreit is a college football analyst. Mm -hmm. And we want him to analyze what's going on in our game, but also teach gamers the nuances of college football. That's what he does every Saturday night. If a safety comes through on a blitz and tackles the quarterback, I want Kirk to be able to teach us, you know, what is that safety looking for, you know, from, from, from that offensive line or, you know, from that offensive play? What's he trying to recognize? What is that quarterback doing in the pocket when he sees a blitz? You know, just allow Kirk to, to riff on it and just give us these really granular descriptions of what it, you know, means to be a college football player and also what to be looking for as a college football player in different situations or what a coaching staff wants. And I think we, we got some really, really compelling uh, new commentary lines from both Kirk and Brad, but specifically mm -hmm. from Kirk from the analysis side. So yeah. it's, it's very exciting from that standpoint. But um, also what we did was um, we utilized new stitching techniques to get more natural sounds. And what a, what a stitch is, it's kind of a technical term for how we piece our sentences together. Um, you know, 
in the past, you might have heard some very disjointed commentary. I'll, I'll show you guys a couple different stitching examples. Whereas in the past, you might hear you know something along the lines of you know Alabama seven, Arkansas nothing. You know for a, a <laughs> so bad. yeah like a half time <laughs> score, or a four quarter <laughs> score. And what's happening there is you know you're putting a team name on, then you're stitching it to a score, then you're putting another team name on, then you're stitching it to a score, and you get these kind of ups and downs, ups and downs. And you can hear the system working. Correct. You know? yeah. Correct. Like you, oh, this name score, yeah. name score. Like. <laughs> yeah. So we were able to to really again harness what EAC has done with FIFA, with Fight Night, with NHL, and. and Get more natural sounds. Use these these secret techniques. I don't want to let everybody know about, but um, <laughs> secret techniques to just make things sound more natural. And and here's kind of one example I'd love to show you guys here. Uh, the the score example that I just talked about. We've got the scores here as they were recorded um, in NCAA 12 for the the end of quarter and the halftime and the end of game. Baylor 38, Boise State 27. So as you can hear there, you know, it's very jarring. Baylor 38, you know, Boise 27. So we've got four stitch points there. Whereas in NCAA 13, uh, what we've been able to do through our new system and the new stitching techniques is make something a lot more natural like this. Baylor leads it 38, 27. So we've got just as many stitches in that last example as we did in the first example. But again, I, I think it sounds a lot more right. natural and, and that broadcast flow that, that mm -hmm. Brad would say on a, on a nightly basis. Very cool. And with yep. that too, there's other examples where it's uh, you know lower stitch count too, correct, right? Correct. So you have a you know pretty general score, seven mm -hmm. nothing, fourteen seven, twenty one nothing, those yep. sort of things. Yep. We had him record just in one spot, so he wouldn't have to sit there and go twenty one nothing. Yeah. It just twenty one nothing, and yep. he'll say it as such because he recorded it in one way, and so uh, it's kind of a, a simple chance to mm -hmm. improve things drastically because you're not going to hear so many points. Correct. Correct. And uh, finally here want to talk about just refreshing and replacing old assets. Um, a lot of our lines have been in the game for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And as a, a hardcore fan myself, they get very repetitive. You start hearing the same lines over and over again. They even become jokes to many people. <laughs> for, for example, if I hear Kirk Herbstreet tell me one more time about a quarterback being a sitting duck, I'm going to go crazy. Because it seems like every sack that happens, I'm hearing Kirk say, nobody likes a sitting duck. It's true, though. It, it is true. Nobody, true it is. No I know. Nobody wants to hear it. I'm done. I'm done with the sitting duck. <laughs> what we are able to do is we researched and studied user telemetry. And for all you gamers out there who play first-person shooters, um, if you take a look at first-person shooter heat maps where a developer will go in and they'll say, okay, you know, a lot of guys are getting choke pointed here or get, getting killed here. Um, you know, they can make their maps different based on this this heat map technology that they, that they have. Um, we have telemetry that tells us commentary lines and how many times certain commentary lines are playing. So it allowed us to go in this year and really just dissect our scripts and banks and say, man, this line is playing over and over and over again. You know, man, it almost taught us too about how people play our game. Uh, nobody ever uh, kicks on fourth down. Everybody goes for it, right? Everybody passes on fourth and long, things like that. So we, we could identify these areas of these old and tired lines and, and rip them out, just take them out of the game, and then employ that new ad-libbing, uh, as well as the stitch techniques, and put in brand new lines into those uh, situations. So you know, you're not going to hear Kirk say something about a sitting duck anymore. You're going to have him analyze who made that sack, mm -hmm. why that sack was made, and so on and so forth. So just, you know, telemetry is very important to us moving forward, especially from the commentary side. And just seeing what you guys are hearing over and over and over again and making sure that we rip those out, give you a fresh experience every year, and just make it sound more natural. So um, yeah, I mean, we're really excited about where the commentary is. Um, we're really excited about the future of the commentary with our new engine, and really excited to tell you more about commentary and a, a new uh, secret uh, talent that we've got we in go. NCAA 13. Oh. Tease for Dynasty, yeah. Yep, yep. Tease, tease, tease. <laughs> so.